All right, I'm gonna try something a little bit different. I want to just basically make a video of me adding in a new feature to my Site Sensei project. So right now I want to be able to upload a file and have the file context show up in the chat widget. And before we start vibe coding a solution, let's talk about what we're trying to build here. So we have a UI, the user should be able to upload a file. That file needs to get stored somewhere. And then I need to read the contents of the file, if it's like a text file, and create an embedding. So when it comes to AI and vector searching, if you don't know how the embedding works, I guess I can give a quick overview. So basically when you upload a file, you take all the contents and you pass that to OpenAI and it sends you back an embedding vector. So it's basically a giant array of numbers and those numbers represent the structure and the characters of the contents of the files. So if you upload a book about like Moby Dick, that embedding will be very different than if you upload a book about Twilight, right? There's different content. And if the file's big enough, you could basically chunk it up and then every chunk could have a separate embedding. So chapter one could be about, you know, certain characters. Chapter two could be about different characters in a different, different setting. And so the idea is you have all these different embeddings stored in a database that point to different files or different segments or content. And then later on, a user wants to do a search. So like, what is the main character of this story? Okay, basically, again, you're going to pass that to OpenAI. OpenAI is going to give you an embedding that represents this. And then you take that embedding and you compare it against your database and try to find the most relevant related things that might have something like a main character. Or maybe if you actually put like a name in here, it actually give you files that represent that name better. So what we're trying to build is when you upload this file, we have to basically create that embedding and then store it somewhere. So I'm going to say... We will go ahead and store the embedding in the database. Let me go ahead and do this. So we actually have like some context. So like the file gets uploaded and then we're basically going to invoke some type of thing to create an embedding over that file. And then the embedding is stored in this database. And then later on when user Bob wants to basically do a query and say, hey, what's the contact number for HR? They can ask a question like that which would basically invoke some other endpoint with their question or their prompt or their query, whatever you want to call it. So that'll generate a embedding or query. So the user will ask the query, we create an embedding. Uh, again, if I wanted to be accurate, we'd have like open AI over here or some type of AI, which is going to be able to be used to generate these embeddings based on, you know, file contents and whatever. Okay, this is a very chaotic diagram, but uh, I think you guys get the point. So anyway, the user will upload the query, get an embedding from that, and then you search your database and say, hey, give me all the relevant, give me the top five things that match whatever the user asked for, and then you can send that back. And the reason we're doing all this is because we have a chatbot, and the chatbot needs to be able to go and look up various things. It needs to look up files. It needs to look up uh, manually added context. It needs to look up pages. All these pages had different content. So when you have hundreds of different items you need to break them up and you know create these embeddings so you can do vector searching to find the most relevant things. I do already have the ability to do manual text content, so like you can go here and like add text if you want to. I also have the ability to do FAQ, so you can come in here and add like an FAQ section. It's funny, someone left a comment on my last video and said I should add FAQ. I basically vibe code this in like five minutes and now I have an FAQ builder. So let's go to files. We're gonna try to get this working with files. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the techniques I like to do for vibe coding. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take this add page. And then also I think I have like a, an add, here we go, file upload form. Can you please finish implementing this file upload form? It should upload the file to convex somehow and then create an embedding off of the contents and store those in the context after the file has been uploaded, redirect back to the main context page. Also update the context page to display all file types in a list. Honestly, this what I'm doing right now is what I've been doing for like the past six months or more. Like I literally just prompt my way to a working solution. I have tried to fight this so much. I have tried to just resist becoming a vibe coder and a prompt engineer. But at this point, like the productivity gains are just so immense that you, you'd actually be kind of dumb not finding a way to become good at using cursor. And I know I've made videos back and forth, the AI sucks, vibe coding sucks, and then I make a video like this where I'm like promoting it. But I'm just being completely honest with you, like I have shaved off 
tons of time building out stuff by just prompting my way to a solution. And then when it has a little bug, I'm experienced enough to go and find the bug real quick. I fix the prompt, I get it to generate the new solution and it just works. And I commit my code and I move on. I'm also having second thoughts about like my channel. Like what, what's the purpose of my channel? Is my channel just so you guys can connect with me and like listen to me yap a little bit? Or like, is my channel actually teaching anything? Cause at this point, like I don't, I don't even need to watch YouTube channels to learn anything. Like AI is there for me. It basically answers all my questions. I'd be curious if you guys are watching this channel, do you guys actually like still try to learn how to code in like React and JavaScript and stuff? I f I'm so disconnected with what a beginner might run into in this industry because I've been doing it for so long. Like are there people out there still trying to learn how to do a for loop and trying to become like programmers? Or are they just embracing cursor and like just letting it generate all the code for you? Because like, let's just check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and accept this. And then we're gonna go ahead and just test this out. I'm gonna go ahead and browse the files. So like right now clicking browse files doesn't actually do anything. So like, I'm gonna go ahead and say clicking browse files does not open a file input picker. Like a part of me feels lazy for doing coding this way, but I also have so much experience in this field that I know how quick you can dive down the rabbit hole of debugging stuff yourself. And just letting AI fix it first is like so beneficial. Like, look at that, it's, it's working now. Let's go and grab this file. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just click upload. Let's see if that works. Uploading, it doesn't seem like uploading the file works. It doesn't seem like uploading the file works. There we go, let's just keep vibe coding that. Let's go over here. I'm gonna go to the file section. Eventually the file should come over here if it, this is gonna work. Um, so let's go ahead and just let this, it's trying to search the internet for something. Like, yeah, okay, so it got kind of confused. It's like doing a different way for uploading files, which is fine, whatever, it'll fix it. Okay, so it's making a method called generate upload URL, which is using the proper thing in convex to generate a storage uh, upload URL. And I'm guessing at some point it's gonna update the UI to use that. Okay, upload file, use mutation, context slash upload file. It should come through and update this in a bit. Probably gonna do that right now to change it to that new method. But yeah, I mean, as this is generating, I guess I could yap some more. So like, I'm trying to understand where I should take my content because with how valuable I find using like cursor and vibe coding and just like prompting my way to a solution. I know my viewers don't want to watch that. They watch my content to learn, but it's almost like when someone introduces a new type of tool and you like you as a professional see the productivity gains using that tool, you just want other people to know how to use it and use it too, right? And it's probably doing beginners a disservice by me making this content about vibe coding and cursor and stuff. But for the more intermediate and experienced people who watch my content, if anyone does, I'm just trying to let you guys know, like there has been legit productivity gains with me trying to vibe code. Like, look at this, it just uploaded a file. Let's go ahead and check this out. The file's there, it's stored. It took about three prompts or four prompts to get that working. Oh, we even have the content here. I, I'm curious, did it actually embed? Did it do the embedding? So let's go and just check the data real quick. Go to context, it should be at the very top, the latest. I do see embedding. So I'm gonna go to my widget, which should be open and I'm gonna say, what did Bob say? Actually, this will not take the content yet. There's actually one place I need to update. You know, sometimes you can like go and like manually do stuff the old fashioned way if you want to. Um, it's good to understand your code base. So for example, I'm trying to find the context section and actually no, I wanna find the agent section. So I have this agent, which takes all these different um, relevant contexts and should combine them with the pages. So this should actually already work. This should return some information about Bob, okay? And it says, Bob said he will come to the office at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Now the reason it responded with that is because I just uploaded that file that has that content in it, okay? so. We literally just implemented the ability to upload a file, as you saw, and then that extracted the contents from the file and then it created an embedding in that and then it stored it into my vector database. And then later when I prompt with the widget, it's using that and pre-pending it to the OpenAI chat context window 
So it has that information because I said the keyword Bob, it found any relevant things that are related to Bob and it just put it in front of the, the prompt window, right? Now I do want to make sure, can I delete this thing? If I try to delete this, I don't know if it'll actually delete the file. Let's go ahead and delete that and go here and go to files and it's still there. So a little, little bug, I could probably fix it myself or I could just prompt my way to a solution. I think I'll probably try to just fix it myself because you guys are going to lose trust in my abilities if I don't actually do some things for myself. Yeah, I think the issue here is I'm not actually storing a, a file storage ID. So I am going to add a storage ID, which is going to be optional in case someone does upload a file. So now we got to find out where we store the file, save file context. Uh, this is going to somehow save the file into the database. Where's that actually happening? So right here is where it posts the file. Save file context. Yeah, this just passed in the storage ID, which means we should probably be able to pass it in here. Um, process file content. I guess it gets added at a later point over here. Is this a mutation? It is. I think what I would actually want to do is probably first store the context. Um, but whatever, it's fine. Let's just go over here. What this is doing is it's grabbing the file from uh, the convex storage and then it's going to fetch it and get the text of that. And then um, we get the content here. The main thing I want to do is I want to store in uh, create file context. What is create file context doing? Let's see. This probably needs to take in a storage ID in case it is set so that we can pass it in here. This will potentially be optional. Actually, this has to be required. So we're going to go ahead and add it there as well. And yeah, I think we should be good. And now when we delete uh, some context, so delete context, we have to basically check. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just grab the storage ID from the context. So yeah, we'll say get the storage ID. If it's set, we'll go ahead and just delete it from storage. Okay, so I think I should have fixed that issue. I'm gonna go ahead and just manually delete this one so we don't have rogue files lay laying around. I'm gonna add another one here. I'm gonna go ahead and just find that temp file, click upload. There we go, we got a document. Now I'm gonna go back and then I'm gonna delete it. There we go, check over here and it's gone, okay. Could I have vibe coded a solution there? Probably. I think the one takeaway from what I just showed you is again, understand your code base, understand your files, what they're doing, how to navigate them, how to read through them. Cause eventually you're going to have to, right? The AI can only take you so far at this particular point in time. And when it starts failing, you have to dive into the code, get your hands a little bit dirty, understand how it works. Let's see a little campfire roll. This is a magic number. We don't want that. Let's just go ahead and I'm going to go to my main index here and I'll say export const. Um, max relevant results, I'll say three. Now, the reason I'm doing this is I don't want a hard coded three in my code base. Like that doesn't make sense. So let's go ahead and just replace that. And I'm curious if I have a hard coded three anywhere else. Let's just go ahead and find it. Oh, look at that, I do. So let's go ahead and change that. And I'm actually change this to max relevant page results. And then this one can be context results. Maybe you want to have them differently but it's still good to have some type of centralized place to configure that stuff so that it's very easy to kind of like come through here and tweak stuff. Let's see, let's go ahead and do a little bit of cleanup here. So I don't have red, get rid of that one, get rid of this stuff. And then we'll go down here, max relevant on text results. Go ahead and import this. All right, there you go. That's kind of the approach I take when it comes to adding features, like what you just saw me do live was like legit how I code when I'm not on camera. I will vibe code to a solution. When it starts getting a little bit tricky or it's not working, I'll just dive into the code, fix it up real quick, and then I'll move on to the next feature. And I literally did that same approach with every single feature in this application. We're showing all the chat sessions here, vibe code it. We're creating the widget, I vibe code it. To creating these contexts where I can manually add text, or I can add a file, or I can add an FAQ builder. I just vibe code it. Same thing with the overview page, right? This little site selector, I think I vibe coded this. Although I did run into a little issue with the combo box with ShadCN, like there's like a issue where you have to go and manually add a disabled ARIA thing to it because you can't click on these things manually without doing it. 
honestly, I don't know if they're even maintaining Shad Scene at this point. They hired the guy who was doing it, and now like that whole component library has like hundreds of open issues in GitHub. Same thing happened with the uh, next auth package. It's just like taking forever to come out. It's been in alpha for like over a year. It's like, I don't think it's even being maintained. The people who used to work on these open source packages, they get hired by Vercel and then they just like stop working on their stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed that. By the way, I'm trying to find like where to take my channel. Like I want to keep making educational content. I just don't want to like sit here and do stuff manually anymore like to me and manually add that file upload and like walk you through all the steps taking 30 minutes to kind of walk you through how i do that what's the point when i can vibe code it in five seconds like i just don't understand like is making content where you teach people how to code is that even important anymore i still want to teach beginners like how to do react and how to do javascript and like basic syntax and problem solving but for this channel, I mean, I feel like this channel is a little bit more intermediate. Like, what is the point? Like, once you learn how to make a box and give it some border and position stuff with Tailwind and how to, like, make an API request, it's just the same thing over and over again in web development. And just letting AI generate all this stuff, like, I just don't understand why you wouldn't do it. I don't know. I guess leave some comments if you guys want to have a talk about this. But, uh, yeah, have a good day. Happy coding.